Welcome to Project Brew Pig. My name is Damien. We're converting a sunken fishing trawler into a global expedition and research boat. We're community funded and you can get on board. Like Scott! How you doing? <laughs> Scott's here today. He's given us a hand with our solar system. We are hooking in our new Victron charge controllers and getting rid of our green box of death. Scott's a Globemaster C-17 captain with the Australian Air Force. He's so far flown 12 missions to resupply the Australian Antarctic base. So these are the charge controllers that we're going to use. They're a Bluetooth Victron charge controller. Um, each one's capable of 20 amps. And I think from memory the voltage in is quite high. I can't see it on here, but from memory it was like 100 volts or something like that. So the, these are going to solve our issue with the solar charge controller not actually feeding amps back into the battery. So each one of these is going to be ganged up to two solar panels. So there's, four, there's eight panels and therefore four charge controllers. So these work together via Bluetooth and they, they work as one unit, but they're basically in charge of two solar panels only. So get these in, and hopefully we'll have some solar charging. So let me give you a run through the system that we've got now, and then I'll go through some of the changes that we're about to make to it. So the system behind me is pretty simple. There's eight panels hooked up in pairs. By eight, I mean seven, because one of them disappeared in a storm. The seven panels that I have will be hooked up as pairs, with one just sitting there not doing anything. So the way that we're hooking them up is this. So each of these panels is 36 volts. We've got them set up as a pair, so they're running maximum 72 volts, so that's open circuit voltage. Um, we get about 65 volts out of these things, so I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's just what we get out of these panels. Um, they, on their own, they're 7.2 amps. They, well, they deliver 7.2 amps. I think they're about eight maximum, something like that. But um, because we have doubled the voltage, the amp stays the same. So we get 65 volts and we get 7.2 amps per pair. So we've got that, that's a pair. Those two there are set up as a pair. These two are set up as a pair. And then this one will eventually have another panel beside it and that'll be a pair. So for now, we have three pairs of panels. Um, so we have a maximum of max of just over 21 amps uh, running at 65 volts. So these panels are basically wired to go down through the roof through that little plastic box you can see just underneath the panel over there. From the box on the roof the cables go through these glands and over to this box. All of this is going to be changing but this is the system we've got at the moment. So they go through this box and up through those cable glands there and then we've put this uh, clip top cable tray type stuff in. It's basically conduit that you can take the lid off and add or remove cables at a later date. So this runs all the way along the side of the lounge. It goes through another cable gland there, so we'll be putting conduit around that. And then from there, it spins around, comes through this gland here. That's a light. That's an awesome light that was given to us by Dennis. Um, and then at the moment, they you might remember from the previous solar episode, this eight millimeter thick cabling used to sit inside here. That's all going. We're running four individual runs and we'll have conduit around the whole lot. So it's a bit hard to show you, but it squeezes down beside the, um, the YouTube box of wonder that Tim built and works its way down underneath these floorboards in the wheelhouse to where the charge controllers sit. All right, cable time. All right, so shopping. Out. Okay, boxes, cool. more boxes, a couple of those, more boxes. and a whole bunch of. Oh, nice, cable glands. Roberts, yeah. Awesome, sweet. I'll start, start throwing some of this in. So, what we've got with these boxes, these are basically going to be our um, essentially the, the conduit between the outside and the inside of the boat. So, these small boxes here, we're going to be linking through the roof. So, this is the old one that we had. Um, and we're going to be basically duplicating that. So have you ever doubted using like adhesive sticker on a boat? <laughs> Two of us had a go at that thing. The box is basically destroyed. There was no way that was coming off. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so that worked great. So the plan is where that box came off, we had two cable glands going through the rear wall of the, of the lounge. We're going to basically join those two up and make a much bigger hole and that's going to allow us to run all of these cables because it doesn't have to be waterproof we don't have to worry about cable glands at this point so scott's going to get on with the boxes and setting up the cable glands and the holes that are going through the various parts of the boat i'm going to carry on with running the cables and starting to zip tie them into this conduit hey 
you drill that part from the inside? Yeah. Uh, right, hole saw to drill. I was thinking about maybe just linking the two together. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, up on the roof, we've got our two holes that we put in. I'm going to try and fit these rubber cable grommets through. Um, I don't have a huge amount of faith that they're going to go through because the gap is tiny. They feel like maybe, like for a firewall, they're probably like, I don't know, a mil and a half gap, two mil gap. Option two, it's not as good, but it's certainly going to work. It's using that flexi conduit type stuff you get, you know, the, the pl hard plasticky thing. It's, where are we? If I open it up, you can see you can kind of open it apart like that. I'm gonna spread that right the way around. Um, it's certainly not my preferred option, but there's just no chance I'm gonna get those hard rubber grommets into those holes. So, let's get this done. Perfect. Perfect. Easy way of doing this. Get the conduit where it is split down the middle. Basically open it up. So, open it up like so. Very difficult to show this on camera. There you go, you see some that's been open, some that hasn't. That gap is enough to allow you to actually get it in there and it stops it from folding over on itself. So that worked. I know some people are going to have a go because I'm using this rather than like a grommet or a cable gland or something, but it's, I don't know how on earth I'm supposed to get a grommet into that. And cable glands are not going to work for what we're trying to do, mainly because we need to put eight of them in here if we're going to use cable glands, we just don't have the real estate. Done, let me show you. So that's what we're left with. That's gonna be inside a waterproof box. So that's plenty to uh, protect those cables from any sort of chafing. Okay. One. Right. So the plan, we're gonna run all of the negatives through one and all of the positives through the other. And then we're gonna also have all of those inside a piece of flexible conduit. So. It won't be the sheathing on the cables that are rubbing on, on this flexi conduit, it'll be flexi conduit on flexi conduit and then the sheathing inside that. So there's gonna be multiple layers of protection and then all of that itself is gonna be sitting in the clip-on conduit in the lounge. So there's gonna be quite a lot of protection around these cables. So, bit of um, something that we didn't expect. This is the box on the back of the thing, back of the solar panel, came loose. Um, when we were moving it around, we, we forgot how tight these wires were, they ended up binding up, we lifted the panel, and this here came loose. So, we're gonna pull it apart. You can see these things here got quite twisted up. We are hoping that they are still functional. So we might have to run some tests on it, but I think, I think it's okay. We'll just obviously do a bit more digging, I think. So what we're hoping to do is remove the original cables and bring our cable straight in and connect it onto this connector. But we're just sort of wondering how much luck we're going to have because the way that they've hooked these terminals up, it's going to be pretty hard to unengineer it really. Swap you. Squeeze a little bit out and we'll be able to pull it out next time we're going to use it. Mm, that's okay. yeah, cool. All right, that's probably good enough for the second. So you're having to do this to every one of them? No. I just kind of oh, did you? How did you do that? God, I hope we don't have to do this to every one of them. <laughs> means we should never be bloody solar installed if we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably good that it happened. This thing, it's just got a stick on it, so the box came away from the shell. Uh -huh. Put a little bit of tension on these. Ooh. So we're just trying to figure out, we want to run the new wires. We don't want these connected. Mm -hmm. So instead of putting a join in it, which is always problematic, we're going to run the new cable straight up and connect it nice. into the box. We're just trying to figure out without... You can sort of see they've crimped it. They, they've crimped it. Yeah. That's what they look like when they're not crimped. So they put the it's interesting, mm. they obviously put the cable in right, put the tool down and yeah. So you're figuring out whether you can 
Oh, I remember looking one. at this. I remember pulling this off last yeah, time, thinking yeah. I'd like to yeah, plug I remember, it straight yeah. in, and now I go, oh man, no. that's not happening. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than just connect with uh. it, I'd love to. I'd still like to go back to doing that, but. Mm. All right, are you to it? Food. Yeah. yeah, this food would be amazing. Thank you. We run the risk of breaking this. Yeah. Maybe we just take our time and do a really bloody yeah. good connection. If you use your resin yeah, strength yeah. though and put conduit around it. Yeah. You know, the black. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's what we'll do then. So, what the plan is, we're gonna take these, take these old glands out and we're gonna drill the holes much bigger. Oh, that's awesome. Scott's up on the roof, so he's just ripping the, oh, okay, the whole thing's turning. Oh, right, oh, cool. We just need to cable, but... Oh, yep, you can pull it through. Oh, nice. There we go, done. If we open them up to that 22 mil, I'll be able to put, um, I'll be able to put some stuff around it to protect it. Sorry, I should. Yes. Right. That'll do. Next one. Is that um, sitting nice at your end? Beautiful. Cool. Okay. Yeah, there's no way I was going to get a grommet or anything on that one. It's like 10 mil thick or something. There we go. That's pretty nice. So second time lucky, that's what we're sort of left with directly underneath. You can kind of see it's a pretty nice, easy path for the cabling to go through, remembering there'll be conduit around this cabling as well. Are you good for videoing and stuff? Yeah. Do you want to roll at some point? I would love some if you can do any of that, I'd really love it. So where are you up to? You're just running them? Yeah. So currently, currently I'm trying to figure out length, getting the right length. So we've got, um... Let me know definitely when you're doing the, um, charge controllers, when you're on the yeah, yeah. detail and thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So... I've just got to make a call and then I'll come out and do some. Sure, sure. We don't have, um, enough of the black cable. Right. So we're just, we're going to have enough to be able to set up two charge controllers today and then I have to get more black cable, so... Okay. And if you want to, I'll get you flowers Waiting around the bend so we've got a bit of a spaghetti sandwich going on. We've got our cabling happening here and you can see they're going up into the original conduit um, bulkhead fitting that we had. So at the moment we've got, uh, what have we got, three red and two black. We need four of each. Um, so not much is cut at the moment, which is how we want it. Let me just go through it here so you can sort of see the cabling randomly running around the room. It's going to fit into that conduit there, but at the moment it's sort of draping around all over the show. Let me just take you out the far side here. So what we're doing is feeding it. Ooh, can't see a thing. We are feeding it through the two openings that we've created up here. So it'll be exiting the conduit there and going through the two openings. We've got a positive and negative opening. And then on this side, you can see it's exiting the back of the uh, back of the lounge room and then it's going up into the roof and we're doing a positive and negative on that side as well So this is the plan We've got the cabling coming up through the little um, Conduit protection that we made and it's going into this plastic box So the plastic box is going to be sealed uh, watertight and then the cable glands as you can see there They're going to be going to each panel so panel in front panel in back or piers in front piers in back at the at the moment So we're going to duplicate that Underneath this panel on this side as well and there'll be no cabling or anything like that going down So when you you got the walkway down the middle there'll be nothing going across that walkway So we're trying to keep any trip hazards out We want, we want these connections accessible. Yeah. So, right, so pulling them out, yeah, so you okay. can pull them out, service them, yeah. make sure they're good, that and then get them off the back. Right. And you can lift the panels up a little bit. Sounds good. So that's that one. And then you just run a negative. 
So what we're, what we're doing is we're basically taping down the cabling so that we've got the length and everything. We're just going to hold it up to the roof with a bit of duct tape. Um, and that's going to tell us, we'll do all of the connections later, but that, that um, will give us our length. And then, yeah, from there we can start to sort out the conduit a bit better in the lounge. When I went and designed these solar mounts, I never actually thought they are such a pain in the ass to undo. It involves possible death. I'll do yep. that. Yep, no drama. I thought about that and I thought this one's easy. I'll get this one over the move this kind of way. So this one's just about unfolded. It's ready to go. I want to stay like this forever. I want to stay right here with you. Now we're going to need some. I'm going to go feed the cables for it. Yeah, cool. These have to go down. Now one's it's here, isn't it? Positive and one's negative. The others are already joined. There's one. I would, I would have them. If we've got the cable to do it, I'll put them both, both there. Here. Yeah. So then we can move the panels later on. Yeah. Sweet. Let me go feed through. Yeah. Uh, I'm just making sure the cable we're pulling through is coming off the reel. Okay. Cool. I, I probably only need maybe that much more. Oh, is that all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think either of them will do that. Okay. All right. Uh, no, that's the front panels. Oh. That one. Ah. Whoop! That'll be heaps. Uh, that's heaps. Let's let's use that down at the other end. So that's heaps, is it? I got like that much there. Oh, awesome. You got heaps at the other end. We let's, can pull heaps let's, back. Or... Let's join and pull it back. Ah. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, cool. All right. So do the, let's do the black. You want to join him up now? Uh, well, we got it all the boxes and stuff, so before we, do you know what I mean? Oh, of so let's just run them for length, then we'll make the boxes mount all that yeah. stuff, and then we'll feed them through and we can join okay. them. So that's what we're left with. It's pretty clean inside that box. Um, there's no real chaos, and it's a single conductor, pretty, pretty much from the solar panel all the way through to the MPPT controller. Um, yeah, there's, there's only one join up here, which is joining it to the solar panel. Uh, and then from there, there's no other breaks in this cable, which is exactly what we we're after. So we had a slight design change. We are going to throw a four cable glands through the side of this box, and then we're gonna run the cabling straight across to these panels here, and we're gonna put, um, we'll get like a cable protector type thing, so you can't basically boot them. Um, it'll be, they'll be completely hidden from UV and all that sort of stuff. But that's the plan, is to... To save two more holes through the deck. Yeah, pretty much. We're just trying to simplify what we're doing a bit. Yeah. I think the real rain's coming. Might be able to see it, but we're getting rained on pretty good at the moment. That weather over the back. That's what we're fighting most of the day. It's been just surrounding us and we're starting to get it now, so we're gonna have to pack up and go in. What do you reckon? Okay, well, um, so what have we got? We've got so you should have two red two black. Okay, cool. Yeah. And we've got the third one to go over. So just get the lengths right. Yep. So For these ones, then we can cut them off. It's that one, isn't it? So the issue that we've come up against is we're trying to make a waterproof exit coming out of the lounge and going up into the roof. So it only has to be waterproof against this face here. It doesn't matter if this bit here isn't waterproof. Um, it just has to not be annoying and drip on us all the time, but that's relatively easy to solve. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use these, these boxes. Um, originally we had one mounted up on the roof like this and we had cable glands coming out of it and it worked quite well. Um, but now we need to, instead of having, I think we had two going out of that box, two cable glands going out of that box, and now we need to have eight. Um, we're using a single box. So, the thought that we're having, basically, it's a little rubber gasket that goes around, sits on top of a raised up lip in here, and it sits on there, and that's that's a waterproof box. 
has these little plastic, don't know if they're awesome, but little plastic screws that go in and do it up tight so you end up with a, a basically a Phillips head screw in the corner. The issue that we have is that because of the ribs in the roof, if we put that in, in that orientation, we're not gonna be able to do the top two screws up. So we have to we have to flip it and have it in that orientation so that the screws are from the bottom. The issue is that by doing it that way, we don't have enough room on the sides to get enough cable glands coming out of it. So um, I'm pondering how hard it would be to do something, do it vertical. We'd have enough cable gland room on the side, but I'd have to modify a screwdriver and do like a right angle type screwdriver, some sort of arrangement like that to do it up. Just wondering if that's even possible. You could do two big glands, put yeah. four through it, goop them and then clamp that as yeah. well. That might be a way of doing it. That might be a way. Yeah. All right. So we've got a solution. So this is our box. We're going to use this cable gland. So this is a, um, a five millimeter to 10 millimeter cable gland. Um, what we're gonna do is put four six millimeter cable, um, tin cables through. Um, I know that sounds dodgy, uh, but we don't really have any other option in terms of being able to fit this. So we're gonna put four going through in one cable gland so that it's quite tight. And we're also gonna fill it up um, with, uh, with a sicker adhesive um, inside it and then we're going to clamp it all shut so uh, it sounds a bit rough but it's as good as we can possibly get um, given the lack of room that we have to work with with this so two of these will be mounted in the side and that's going to get our waterproof um, entrance into the lounge now remember that this is pretty well protected so we're against the back wall of the boat we're right up under the roof um, if we're starting to get water egress here the boat's underwater anyway so um, yeah I think we'll be right Perfect. Yeah, there's 16 mil straight through. Then we drill it back out. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon we just smash a hole saw through that. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. yeah, you hold it on. Does that sit over the top of the conduit there? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Got a lot of crap to get. It does have crap. That seventh panel drive, that eighth panel drives in nuts. You surely will get another one round these if I get in. The issue is, is that they're uh, like panels are getting bigger and bigger, and these are 235 watt panels, yeah. so they're small. Like, yeah. And it's actually kind of difficult to find 235 watt panels anyway. Yeah. Like in 36 volt, there's heaps in 12 volt and whatever, but... Because they're not legally allowed to sell them and get the STCs and all the other stuff. Yeah, so that's why I got panels for 50 bucks works? for eBay. That's why you've seen so many panels online for sale. Yeah, and that's why they're worth nothing, because they have to just get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, I need to crack that off. Just thinking so we should probably pull these through now that yeah. we don't want to damage the panels. Yeah, let's just... Drag them all through. Uh, I'll run up there. Will they take down? Oh no, we put them in the glass. No, we'll put them in the glass. Yeah. yeah, they're all set lengths, right? So yeah. Good that one. Oh, so we might as well glue this up now, eh? 
think we're ready to go now. This is so you got four and four. Yeah, that's perfect. That's it. All right. So what we created was two big holes where it comes in through the side of the um, the cabin. So that sits that way around, up like that. So easily fits through that um, that conduit there. And then we've got the the two big cable glands that are going to have the four. Um, four millimeter squared conductors going through them and then they're going to have sicker inside that to really watertight it up. So we'll get rid of this, we'll glue all of this in and then we'll put this back on encapsulating this edge as well. So we ended up with our box basically working out all right, pretty stoked with that. And we've got our uh, adjustable clamping mount here. This is just a piece of PVC pipe that we've just got jimmied in there to hold it at the second. And then we threw this conduit. So we've got the four red cores coming through. We've got the black flex conduit, goes up through our homemade grommets um, and into that box up top. There's no joins in the box at all. There is some water apparently, but there's no joins in that box at all. Um, and then from there it goes through cable glands and out to each panel. So first things first, to just discard all that side and clean it up. Yep. Just this side. Starting with that small one. Mm -hmm. Take some shit. Okay, so this is gonna be a challenge. But Safety first. Safety first. Safety first. 
so it's still pissing down. Right, I'm going to put you inside our work cave. Awesome. Alright, what we're doing, this is the positive that we've run that goes right up to our charge controller without any breaks in the cable. This is the solar panel cable, the original cable off the solar panel. So we've cut the stupid connector off and we've got, it's a tin cable, so we're going straight tin, tin, join. We've got some resin infused heat shrink ready to go. We've splined these together. So we're gonna solder those together. Um, and then we're going to put our heat shrink over top of it and seal the whole thing up. And we're doing this on the wettest day we've had for a while so that we can try and get the most chance of um, corrosion happening in these cables. <laughs> really important when you're doing soldering like this to find the smallest soldering iron that you can. So for those that don't know, these are tin cables. Basically what it means is every strand of copper has a coating of solder over top of it and it's what you want for a marine environment because it stops corrosion and there's a couple of ways you can join you can either solder like this or you can do the crimping and heat shrinking like we sort of saw in the gauge episode um, either way has their pros and cons in this case we're going to do it because we kind of want something that we never have to think about again so we're going to be soldering it like this and then heat shrinking it up now we just wait for this thing to get super hot we get there. So it's all about getting as much heat into this joint as we can before we start to get the best flowing solder. So I'm just going to spend a minute or two yeah, cool. to heat this joint up. How do you go with like, like, like what, how do you know if you're getting too much heat into a joint and it starts melting the oh. insulation? Yeah, uh, visually it starts, to, you see it start to smoke and melt, yep. go a bit gluey, but for all, the thickness of this cable and a small 30 watt soldering iron, I don't think it's really going to be an issue. Yeah. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be not getting enough heat into it, but we'll do our best. There's barely enough heat in there just to melt this little. Yeah. I have done it with the gas torch before, but normally you get too much heat and yep. start melting everything around it. When you don't have the tools you want, you have the tools you've got. <laughs> yeah, so you can see straight away, see it, how it goes blobby? Yeah. It's just this, the metal's so cold, as soon yeah. as it touches it, it cools down. Yeah, yeah. Is it worth getting the gas torch? It might be, to be honest, to give it a little warm up in the middle there. Yeah. And see, because this is, I don't think, yeah. this thing's never going to cut it. All right, let's just let's just um, can it, get the gas torch and have a go at it. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's what we ended up with. So we ended up having to use our, our little um, map gas torch thing to get it hot enough. Um, really struggling with our tiny little soldering iron, but we managed to get there in the end. We've got a join that we're happy enough with, so we'll seal that up now. And um, yeah, we should be getting some amperage flowing through these panels. So when you're splicing your wires together, you want to just, don't twist them, but you want to just press them together. It gets a wee bit messy, but like that. Oh, fucking bollocks. Let's do that again. There we go. Push them together like that, and then you sort of tap them down, and then you can solder them like that, and that gives you the best possible mesh of the, of the cabling. Without having a huge blob as well, yeah. yeah some of that shit for the time being, you see the conduit. Oh, I tell you what, it's probably not the best day to do it up here. Probably not. I set myself aside, the way Is this safe? Yeah. To give you like that? Yeah. It's not going to fall off the tripod? No. Yeah. on. With the new wiring for the charge controllers and the batteries going from 48 volts down to 24, we're going to be making a couple of changes to our system. So Tim's designed us up a pretty badass electrical system. We're going to need a couple of kill switches. So we went into town and we found some of these Nava um, kill switches. 
I, I've used Nava before and it's it's fine, it seems to be pretty strong. Um, there's another brand I prefer called Blue Sea. Um, it's a bit more expensive but it seems to be more robustly built and a little bit more sort of options and things like that from what I can sort of tell. Um, the reason why I chose these ones, so um, we're basically up against the clock in terms of being able to find parts because it's often very, very difficult to get parts locally and I have to order things and it takes a long time to get stuff in um, for where we are. We don't have the luxury of overnight shipping in most cases. Um, so these, these little Nava switches, here's one out of the packet. The reason why I chose these is because they have the highest continuous amp rating. So these ones are 150 amps continuous at 24 volts and they can handle bursts for 10 seconds, they can handle 750 amps. So they can handle a massive amount of power. One of the things that I noticed at the shop when I was there today, I went through all of the different options. Some of the 500 amp rated switches that were on, on the shelf, um, yeah, it was good for 500 amps for five seconds and then they, some of them went as low as 10 amps uh, continuous so I just thought that was just absolute garbage so if you were to put that on your battery yeah it would handle it for five seconds and then it would just fry itself so completely junk ab absolute rubbish whereas these ones have a pretty decent um, continuous rating and that's the rating that you really need to look at so I'm back under the floorboards in the wheelhouse with all the solar gear behind me that we fitted in our solar episode now I'm about to rip out half of this gear and I know some people are going to go oh that's you know you should have done it right in the first time and all that sort of stuff but the amount that I've learned by doing it wrong the first time and then everybody chiming in with their advice and lots of experts coming in basically saying how to do it I would do this again in a heartbeat for the amount that I've learned and that's a massive factor with Brewpeg I'm not I'm not worried about owning our mistakes I'd rather do that and then learn and do it right the second time yes it's cost me money yes we've lost some time but man we're going to have such a better system as a result and I now know why it's going to be a better system 48 to 12 volt converter won't need that all right so where's that go so that goes into the air. so we are going to be reusing this box so we can get rid of that Let's separate those out you're gone you're gone that is the old solar feed it's not going to be used you're gone You're gone, cool. Right, so that's that clear. Right, piece of solar controller. You're gone. An amp gauge that I had wired in that I was trying a theory. Right, that one. What do we got there? That is the, that was our old battery, so that's unhooked, so we can leave that. That is our load, and that went off to our, yep, so that's gone. That one, Get that one. Okay, so that's that gone. And then we'll cut those and I can take that controller out easier. Right, they're gone. Cool. So, let's work through and disconnect our batteries. We rewired and did a temporary setup where we have this main feed that breaks off into different branches of cabling and they all clip onto these batteries. Now, as you can see, these batteries don't have terminal posts, which is a pain in the ass. If you're looking for deep cycle house batteries, don't buy batteries like this. I, it was the dumbest thing I did. I'm so annoyed that I did it. And the reason being is that it's very difficult to now add like stock standard marine fuses and things to it. You have to start doing stupid custom wiring when you could have just bought something really good off the shelf. So trick for people that are setting up their own systems, don't buy batteries that don't have terminals. The reason I want this box, so it's more of a household thing as opposed to a boat thing, but for what we're doing it's going to work perfect and the reason I want it is because I can use these type of breakers. Um, we're finding it incredibly difficult to find marine rated waterproof uh, 75 volt circuit breaker. Almost impossible to find in this part of the world. Um, I'm not sure if they're available over in North America or anything like that, but I can know I can get them in this size here. So we're gonna mount one of these inside so it's not, it doesn't have to be waterproof, it's gonna be at the roof on the lounge. Um, and this is gonna provide the circuit breakers for our solar panels. So, you can pop that, 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 like that. We can take, they have a little lever at the top here. You can lift that lever in and out. 
lift it out, you can take these off this rail, the DIN rail. So these will sometimes be known as DIN or D-I-N in Finale. These are awesome. This is a golf cart DC-DC converter. They're completely encapsulated in epoxy resin or whatever the, the black resin is that they put on these sorts of things. Big aluminium heatsink body. Um, they're pretty good price as well. And yeah, it was bloody awesome little thing. I set myself aside. That's what's inside a shit charge controller. I have no intention of keeping this, so it may be coming off with a hammer. The, the controller didn't work. We're just going to rip into it and make sure that we can get it out, clean this up, because we're going to start mounting our Victron charge controllers. So now we've gone and pulled the battery box compartment apart and we've got the DIN rail holding uh, breaker box here. So this is basically mounted in the back corner of the lounge. So at the moment you can see the cabling and everything's just bypassing it. But we're going to bring those red cables only in through the side up here and then out through that side and they'll be running through breakers that sit there. Um, the reason we're only doing the red is we only need to fuse the positive. And the reason we're using the setup that we've got is it's inside, so we don't have to use waterproof um, breakers. We're using these aluminium blocks to hold it. It's stood off with aluminium blocks. Um, basically, we're trying to, we'll fill those with polystyrene and we're trying to create um, the least amount of condensation near that roof as, as possible. That's why we've allowed so much because we're having, um, that box is also gonna be sort of sunk into the insulation. So you won't see any of these holes or anything that are hanging out the side of it as well. So um, it looks a little bit sort of higgledy piggledy at the moment, but it'll make a lot of sense once the insulation starts going in. Because that ply got butchered when I took that green box off the battery compartment mounting wall, I'm going to make a replacement. So I don't need to replace the whole thing. 90% of that wood's still okay. It's just the top layer of that ply that's come off and looks absolutely awful. What I'm going to do is essentially build a 4mm skin and we're just going to put that, take everything off, put the 4mm skin on it because I want to rejig things. I've just, I've, now that I've sort of lived with it a bit, I've decided I've set it out the wrong way around. I want to put my fuses where I can access them real easy and all my on off switches and then I'm going to put the charge controllers where I don't need to access them as much so they're going to go sort of more towards the back of the boat and all the fusing and all that sort of gear is going to go up the front end. Give that a quick sand up and then we'll go and throw some paint on it. I'm just going to use an orbital sander with 120 grit. Um, I use ceramic discs because they seem to last, like the grit is ceramic, seems to last a bit longer. Lots of products you can use to seal up wood. We're just going to be using straight epoxy today. That will definitely do. I came to do some work in Brewpeg's wheelhouse. That is the sunset. Isn't that just stunning? Look at that red. Hey, I heard 
Gonna cry when you're gone.